practices to be able to anticipate, quantify, monitor, manage and mitigate fiscal risk from the state corporations. Mr. Speaker, Kenya always plays a major and catalytic role in the economic development of this country. The airline is facing severe cash flow constraints following the global lockdowns triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. The government has a major shareholder supporting the restructuring of Kenya Airways to adapt to the challenges facing the aviation industry due to the adverse impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Kenya Airways will be required to trim its network, operationalize frequencies of, rationalize frequencies of flights, operate a smaller fleet, and rationalize its staff complement. I'll be proposing a budget allocation to meet the restructuring cost. Mr. Speaker, the government will continue to support Kenya Power and Lightning Company to increase its efficiency while sustaining systematic reduction in tariff to electricity users. The recent 15% tariff reduction by the government has not only brought immediate relief to the consumers, but also led to the realization of broad benefits, including reductions of prices of goods by manufacturers. Mr. Speaker, the Kenyan banking sector is stable and has shown great resilience with strong capital and liquidity buffers built on reforms initiated by the Central Bank of Kenya. A clear demonstration of resilience and recovery of the banking sector from the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic was strong capital adequacy and liquidity ratios. As at end of December 2021, capital adequacy ratio was 19.6%, which was above the minimum requirement of 14.5% while liquidity ratio was 56.2%, which is also above the 20% requirement. The sector has continued with this transformation journey under the Kenya Banking Sector Charter issued in 2019 by the Central Bank of Kenya. The charter focuses on strengthening risk-based credit pricing, entrenching customer centricity in the operations, and ensuring ethical culture in the banks. In addition, the Central Bank of Kenya Act 2021 was enacted to provide the central bank with powers to license and oversight the previously unregulated digital credit providers. Mr. Speaker, commercial banks face climate-related risk in their operations. In this regard, the CBK issued a detailed guidelines on climate-related risk management to all commercial banks in 2021, in October 2021. The banks are now required to integrate climate-related risk into the operation overall risk management framework. Mr. Speaker, the FIN Access Survey 2021 conducted in, in the 47 counties revealed that access to formal financial services improved from 82.9% in 2019 to 83.7% in 2021. The increase of 0.8% access through the formal channels was attributed to the progress made by Kenya to expand financial access through various channels, including mobile money financial platforms. Access through the informal uh, channels, on the other hand, reduced from 6.1% to 4.7%, while the excluded population increased slightly from 11% to 11.6% during the same period. Mr. Speaker, over the last 15 years, an elaborate financial service ecosystem in Kenya has evolved from an initial basic money transfer innovation. In this period, Access to financial services has increased from 26% of adults in 2006 to the current 83%. Further, the government has rolled out mobile money, strengthened real-time growth settlement system, and established a regional payment system at both the East African community and Comesa region. In order to strengthen the national payment system, Mr. Speaker, the Central Bank of Kenya in February 2022 launched the national payment strategy 2022-2025, which seeks to realize a faster, secure, efficient, and collaborative payment system that supports financial inclusion and innovation, while reinforcing the emergence of 24-hour economy. Mr. Speaker, in order to attract increased financing and investment in Kenya, the Nairobi International Financial System Authority has put in place the required operating framework and regulations.